And today we have a uh, new play toy on the bench. This is mine. I uh, just got in today. It's a Keithley Instruments 104 Wide Band Amplifier. Um, now, anybody that's watching this thinking radio, no, no, it's not, it's not that type of amplifier. Uh, it's not meant to hook up your radio and then to an antenna. <laughs> uh, you'll definitely, well, I'm not going to say you'd let the smoke out, but yeah, you'd blow the front end out of this thing in an instant. <laughs> this is, uh, meant for laboratory use or on, you know, on the test bench. Um, I've wanted one, something like this for a long time. Um, the problem is the majority of your laboratory amplifiers, wide band amplifier. That was the other thing. I wanted a wide band amplifier. Um, because I deal with all sorts of frequency ranges. Um, but the problem with most of them is they're 50 ohm input and output. Matter of fact, you can see here, output 50, input 50, output 50, input 50, output 50, input, aha, that's what makes this one kind of unique. One mega ohm at one picofarad has an extremely high input impedance. Um, now this thing is old. Uh, probably see that just by looking at the mountain of <laughs> electrolytic can capacitors back there. Um, but uh, what gives this such a high input impedance is a tube. Now it only has one tube in this thing. Everything else is solid state. Now this is old as the hills. But what gives it its high input impedance is that right there. A NuvaStore. little guy pulled out so there's the first and it's not actually the first stage is not actually an amplifier um, the first stage in this is only a basically a one a one meg input I'm gonna get the tabs line back up here little guy plugged back in um, it's just that it's a one one time so it's not really meant to do any amplification it's designed strictly to be used as basically a one mega ohm input because you can see one x then we have ten times and ten times so this input right here is designed to be used to just that so you have a high input impedance if you don't want to load down a circuit that you're actually testing and that's what these mainly are used for you know amplifying small signals out of you know a signal generator but the reason I wanted this is using an oscilloscope's kind of I don't want to say it's useless, but it's extremely hard or just plain impossible to view tiny signals on an oscilloscope uh, because your volts per division only go down so far. Now, if you work on radios, you're dealing with signals coming in off the air, and you know when you're dealing with the the first the first stages in an amplifier stage inside of a radio. You're dealing in microvolts, <laughs> really, really small signals. Well, you put five microvolts into an oscilloscope probe, you know, you, the, the, you're just going to see a flat line on your scope. You're not going to see anything because most of them go down to you know, maybe 10 millivolts per division or, you know, something like that, or one millivolt per division, or maybe even 500 microvolts or 100 microvolts, you know. But if you're looking at a four microvolt signal, at a hundred on you know a hundred microvolt per division scope, well you know the divisions are only that big; they're a little square. You still wouldn't be able to see that little tiny four you know four microvolt signal. That's for this. That's where I wanted this for. So now I can hook up a scope probe to the one that make input on this. And what you do is just cascade these or just run them in series. And that's the way they're designed and actually back in the day. This is actually one of the original jumper cables that would have come with this. Um, and what you do do is, is you run the output of one straight into the input of the next. And then you do the same same thing again. You'd run the output of this stage into the input of this stage, you know, for max maximum amplification. So, you know, this is just your one time, which gives you the, the high input impedance of the, you know, the vacuum tube. And that's why they used a vacuum tube, because tubes have really high uh, impedance. Um, and then, you know, you only needed, say, 10 times amplification. You could take your output here, run it over to your test equipment. Or if you needed even more, you could run it into the next stage, you know, multiplied by 10 again. To, to whatever you're using, you know, spectrum. Now, usually with a spectrum analyzer, modern ones, you really don't need to amplify because the the levels go down so far on those. But uh, like I say, this has all kinds of handy uses um, for taking really small signals and making them really big. You know, it does the same thing that an amplifier does in a you know 
your radio, your our regular RF amplifier that you hook up to, the, you know, your radio to amplify your signal out the antenna. It's just this one's designed for the test bench, and it's not designed to have several watts going in. It's designed to have really small signals going in. Um, now, I actually also have the uh, instruction service manual for this. Um, I'm trying to see, where is the spec sheet? There we go. So, there's the spec sheet on it. Now, the difference with the, this manual actually covers the 104 and the model 105. Uh, difference is, this is the wideband amplifier. The 105 was a pulse amplifier, which we don't need to be worrying about pulse amplification. So, that's what I wanted was you know, something that's just a regular wideband amplifier. But, uh, you know, like I say, nice thing, the input impedance. That was my main thing. Uh, you know, one meg input impedance. So, but pretty good specs for an old, uh, an antique, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, and I'm not looking for, I really don't care if it's exactly 10 times, if it's a perfect level. I'm not going to be using this to take quantitative measurements. I just need it to mainly do signal tracing. And a lot of times, like I say, signal tracing with tiny signals, you can use something like an old signal tracer. But yeah, even then, you got it's it's got an output, but not really designed. To, it, it's unless you've used one, and you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to do that. Man, this is just so nice. I'll be able to hook, like I say, hook up scope probe here, hook up into the circuit. Don't have to worry about loading it down. And then I have, you know, I can amplify it through two stages here. And actually, now I can get uh, normal. Uh, wideband amplifiers. Uh, matter of fact, you can get wideband amplifiers that do a, you know, 100 or even a 1,000 watt, you know, actual watts output power, um, you know. So I could actually take, using this, you know, you don't, you could take, or actually any of those, you could take, you know, just a signal generator, like out of that or that, and, you know, you just keep pumping it up in power. Like I say, the nice thing about this is the low input impedance. So, and that was the main thing I wanted, to be able to take really high, have that, have that really high input impedance in the you know mega ohm range um, for doing signal sampling. So yeah, and it's actually I have it hooked up to the power supply now. It is noisy. Oh my God, does this thing ever? It does it ever sing? Um, I haven't actually, and I tell you the truth, I haven't even looked at the schematic in this. I just brought it up slowly on a variac and didn't really have any current show. And then all of a sudden, bam! Like it, I had this high pitch one. Of course, I really quick. You know, hit the power switch, turned it off. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That almost sounded like a, you know, it didn't sound like a capacitor leaking. It was, you know, it, an electrical noise. Well, sure enough, so I'll turn it on so you can hear it. It even sounds like it kind of winds up. And it just does that. It just steadily sits there and hums along at that. And, <laughs> and it's, it's somewhere... I don't think it's the cap. It might be this voltage regulator transistor down here. It doesn't appear to be coming from this board. Because the most effect I can get is actually touching stuff over here. If I flip it over some of the other components on the underside. So it's in, it's in this area. I get the feeling it might be that transistor down there. Now, like I say, this thing's old school. You know, this is a very early solid state unit. Um, that does use a vacuum tube. But, uh, so... There's the uh, transistor I was talking about down there. Yeah, I got lots of big can capacitors. Um, and they're not really <laughs> nowadays, because I mean, shoot, this thing's what? 150 microfarads at 80 volts. I mean, wow, that is a gigantic capacitor for 180 microfarads, or 150 microfarads at only 80 volts. Um, this one here is what? 500 at 35 volts. This is a dual section, two 500 microfarads at 35 volts. Same thing for this one. So, yeah, they're vo they're low voltage caps. There's going to be one high voltage cap in here somewhere, or see, a slightly higher voltage. Yeah, I can see that one's what? That's an 80 volt, 80 volt. But there's going to be a slightly higher voltage one in here somewhere, because remember, we do have one vacuum tube in here. But uh, there you go, there's just a preview. Now I'm going to completely restore this. I already just did a really quick vacuuming out of it, because man, it was whoo, the dirt and dust in here. Because 
here's what both the top and bottom covers look like. So yeah, lots of vent holes <laughs> for dust to get in. Um, and man, look at look how thick that solid front aluminum plate is on this thing. Yeah, they just don't build stuff like they used to, man. I mean, the whole the whole chassis is a solid. <laughs> it's all aluminum. But uh, yeah, I'll, I really needs a good cleaning out. I haven't even had the RF shield off of this section yet. But uh, of course, I need to recap it. Most all of these, I can I can go with modern um, modern caps. Uh, I think just looking at the underside, some of these multi sections were just paralleled together. Um, to increase the value, so probably what I'll do because they do have the the fiber disc bases on them. I'll probably I'm not going to bodge a bunch of uh, you know axial lead caps on the bottom. If they're multi-section can caps or just single section like this one and this one and this one, what I can do is just use a modern reach around grab one you know modern radial. Uh, I'm getting the right drawers here. But, you know, I can just take a, a modern radial, just use the holes in there, set the capacitor down in there, you know, so it, it'll still be sitting up here on top and then just have the leads go down through the fiber disc there on the, you know, into the bottom side. But uh, yeah, it'll definitely be, I mean, I could even restuff them because, you know, obviously I said those for, what, 50, uh, two. 50 or 500 microfarads, I think I said, if I have 500 microfarads at 35 volts, I mean, so, you know, two 500 microfarads, just to give you an idea, uh, at 35 volts in parallel, well, that's a thousand microfarads at 35 volts. Well, here is a modern thousand <laughs> microfarad at 35 volt, you know, a Nichicon. You know, good good quality cap. <laughs> so this cap right here does exactly the same thing that this one's doing. Yeah, look at the size difference. Man, I could stack you know, six. Probably I could put five or six of those in there. But uh, yeah, big difference in size with capacitors nowadays. But uh, yeah, it's not going to happen right now. I got I got so many blasted radios to work on. It's not even funny. But uh, yeah, I do need to get this because you know this this is going on the bench to be used. So like I said, I've wanted a, a, a wide band amplifier for a long time, but all of my ever would see would be 50 ohm input impedance. Yeah, you can do matching inputs and whatnot, but still, it's not ideal. This is this is exactly what this was meant for. It even tells you that in the owner's manual. It was designed to be used as a uh, a high input and in, impedance amplifier for uh you know that could then be attached to frequency counters which that's another thing this could be used for um you know attached to frequency counters oscilloscopes or any any other type of test equipment that's you know basically what this was designed for it's designed to be an amplifier as a basically a preamp stage to your test equipment so sometime in the future i'll uh, get this thing redone I just I need to track down that buzz. Might be nature of the beast. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like it's a <laughs> it's a cap getting ready to blow up. That sounds like a normal something that's that's the normal noise that it makes. It's just kind of I really need to. I don't not that I need to, but I'd just be really interested to see exactly what it is because I don't think it's yeah. It almost seems like it's that transistor. Well, actually, then again, I touch it. Just touch the chassis here. Yeah, really strange. <laughs> just, I, it's just curiosity is going to kill me. I got to figure out what the hell that noise is. But there you go. There's just a preview of a Keithley Instruments 104 wideband amplifier. Thing I forgot to point out <clears throat> with this was, and. Uh, Man, so easy to service. If you ever accidentally overdrive a stage and <laughs> blow out a transistor or something, uh, of course, this little tiny vacuum tube, I'll move the camera here, this little tiny vacuum tube, of course, is in a socket, but all of the transistors in this are in sockets, too, so if you would happen to blow, you know, burn out one or you just need to test them, <laughs> they're all in sockets. I mean, God, how easy does it get? Why can't they make stuff this easy to work on nowadays? I mean, you could literally test every single transistor in this in you know, a minute flat. You know, just take your little 
transistor tester, unplug it, plug it in, test it, take it out, plug it back in, and just go through the stages. And something that I noted was there was a freebie included, a brand new one there. So, you know, it even even has a spare taped to the underside here. Uh, but, yep, yeah, like I said, that's, that's really nice. It's just a matter of just unplug, plug it in, and go. Now, the only thing i got to do is, is, what the hell are these things? Uh, what do we got? Hmm, that's an oddball number. SM492. I don't know if I've ever even seen one of those. I'll have to check and see if I have any of those in inventory. <laughs> if not, I'm going to have to track some down or figure out what a good substitute is. I mean, I have one, so no worries. And I did I did actually test this. It does work. Every stage works. This has, you know, one times in and out, and both of these do about ten times. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm one of those I always like to uh, have spares of everything. So, you know, if this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if it has eight, that means I should have eh, at least 32 on hand. <laughs> I'm an overkill person. Um, I mean, even, even down here, even this is in a socket. You have to take the two bolts out, of course, but it's, it's in a, you can see here, it's in a push-in socket. So every, every, all the, all those transistors are socketed. Um, now everything on this board, on the other hand, as you saw all the ones, you know, sticking on the top side, they're all, uh, you know, soldered in, but, uh, those are not the ones that are normally, you know, you'd accidentally damage. Um, the ones that you're going to be accidentally damaging, you know, if it ever happens because of overdriving an input or something, it's going to be these here. So it's, it's just really nice to see they're so easy to change. So there you go. I just thought I'd uh, point that out the ease of service.